So, all right. So, um, I think we're ready to start doing some like, real applications of um, more steering handles. Um, whatever details I have improved or skipped, we'll try to fill them in as we go along. Um, uh, so, the first thing I want to state that we're improving is um, uh, proposition that this, um, so I'll state it this way. Suppose that X is connected is that, I mean, so just an example, you could have this, and, you know, I'm going from something, the whole thing is connected, and the bottom and the top are not empty, and so I don't expect to need, you know, I don't expect to need a minimum anywhere. I mean, that, that is unnecessary. It can happen, but it's unnecessary. Um, and, of course, the whole, if the manifold is disconnected, you might have something like this. And in that case, you would, that, that index zero greater point is essential because the manifold is disconnected. I mean, the manifold could be, could be disconnected and still not need index zero critical points, obviously. But, but this is the point. If the whole thing is connected and you're, you know, you've got something non empty at the bottom and something non empty at the top, then um, you've got to, you don't need a critical point index zero. Okay. So, um, the proof is going to go this. Um, I mean, the proof is going to just go by, well, if there are, if there are any, let's cancel them. Okay. And so how do we do that? Um, let's see. Let's assume that um, let's assume that as we mentioned before, that the critical values are ordered by index. Which means that lower index critical points have lower critical values. So we have we start at number zero, then we have index some number of index zeros, then index ones, and so on all the other. And we're just going to let's um, so um, you know, the goal is to cancel all index zero critical points by finding canceling critical index one critical points by finding canceling. Deal with the ends, turn upside, upside down, turn upside down with the heat. Um, and that deals with the ends. The index end. right, when you turn it upside down, the index is zero, critical point for the index end. And this kills. Ambiguity about what I mean by turn upside down. Just replace f with one minus f, and the index zero comes. Oh, that's a pivot in the last point. No. Uh, well, actually, I mean, every time I kill an index zero, I'm also going to kill an index one. And here, every time I kill an index n, I'm going to be killed. I'm going to cancel it. Well, when I turn it upside down, the um, zeros and ones I turn upside down become n minus ones and okay. n's. Okay. But it's really the n's that I want to get rid of. I happen to have to sacrifice some minus ones along the way. Okay. Um, and 
Uh, so, of course, just inductively, we just need to show that I can get rid of one of them. So we'll get rid of the, uh, let's kill the, um, uh, the lowest index of the Um, so the claim is just that there exists um, so the claim there exists some index one critical point Q with exactly one gradient flow line down to Good, then I can buy what we said, we can cancel it. Okay? So what if, what if, well, let's prove that claim by contradiction. Okay. Um, not. Um, well, so the point is index one critical points are kind of special. Um, so if not, there's a couple of choices. There's no index one critical points that have any flow lines down to P. So if not, we have two cases. Case one, no uh, index one critical points with any flows. And then I claim, I mean, I would argue that if it, then if we look at two cases, there's that, and this case two, all index one critical points. Well, if they don't, if, if see, index one is special because you do there, first of all, you're flowing from index one down to index zero. There's only two directions of the descending manifold for index one critical point. So if you hit it, you hit it once, you hit it zero times once or twice, and that's it. Okay? So case two, um, all index one critical points. Oh, all index one critical points. Maybe I don't need to split this into cases, but anyway, um, which uh, flow. Have two such points. Okay, and I claim that in both cases the um, manifold's got to be disconnected. Um, so the first case is um, so what you want to do is, I mean, you know, I'll just draw a picture. The point is you've got. Your, your index P is, is a minimum, right? So here's, here's the, the manifold. Something has happened, blah, blah, blah. We're at the lowest index zero critical point, right? And if there's, so, so the point is, how can, here's P. When you rise just above P, P creates a new component. So if you look at, if you look at F inverse of, F inverse of, Let's say zero to f of p plus epsilon. This is disconnected because it's precisely whatever was below here, m zero cross interval together with the zero. So that's disconnected. And now, what can connect this component? So here's this component. How can it ever get connected over to this component? Right. Well. Um, the only possible way is the one handle, right? One handle is the only thing to connect things that are disconnected because a, a two handle is going to be attached along a circle, so it's never, it's always got to be attached to the entire component, right? To, you can't, it can't just uh, connect two dis, disjoint components. Similar for any higher index critical point. So only index one critical points can connect distinct components of a level set. Is this right? the, like that comment you made a while back where, like? Index one affects pi yes, zero. Yes, exactly. Index one kills pi zero and generates pi one. Index two kills pi one and generates pi two, two etc. Okay. Um, and so, in fact, there's a there's a you can think about what's what would be the there ought to be a generalization of this theorem. 
that says if x is simply connected and the level sets are um, connected, m0 and m1 are connected, then you want to see can you do it without index 0, 1, or n or n minus 1. But that's hard. That, that those, that those sort of generalizations get much subtle. Did you try pi, to pi 1 is way. Pi in, yeah. And it's going to go like n minus 1. Yeah, but it's much, I mean, in high, maybe in high dimensions, things like that work. But in low group, pi 1 is obviously way more complicated than pi 0. Um, OK, so this is this will be disconnected. And you need um, one handles to connect back to say back to the main mass. Okay, and if if there are no one handles that connect here at all, then forget it. And if every one handle connects twice, then you know if, it, if every one handle that, that here has two things, it won't also won't connect. Right? So, therefore, contradiction. I mean, I won't write that down, but anyway, both of these, these imply uh, x is um, Therefore, there exists one, and therefore, you can cancel some of the zeros, one by one. Should I say any more about that? That, by the way, was the missing ingredient. That, together with the fact that we order critical points, was the missing ingredient for really proving that three manifolds have Hagar splittings. Because the Hagar splitting for a three manifold comes from a Morse function with a single index zero critical point. Well, I, I, I'm sorry. That what happened? I, this, this is. It's the same. Sorry. It, it, it's, so, so now there's a corollary to this proposition, which is if X is closed, it's connected. Right. It, it's somehow easier to state it in this setting, but I'll write it here. Um, <coughs> corollary. If x is closed and connected, and now it has no boundary, then there exists f from x to r with um, one index zero and one index n. And how do you prove this corollary? You take x closed and connected, you remove two balls, you apply the previous theorem, because now you've got a coercion from sphere to sphere, you apply the previous theorem, and then you put the two balls back in, you make them zero handles and negative. And so from that, you get that um, uh, this implied, I'm sorry, the corollary of that is uh, for every closed x3 has a right splitting. Because we needed to know, hey, I mean, if, if you have multiple zero handles, then you might be a little more confused about um, but if you have a single zero handle, a bunch of one handles attached, then that's the bottom half, and then flip it upside down, the other part, the, the threes and the, the twos and the threes, flip them upside down, there is zero and a bunch of ones. Those are both genes, gene handle bodies put together somehow. Okay. Um, the next part that I want to say is I want to take now. Um, now the next proposition is that if f zero and f one go from x to zero one uh, uh, are as x is going to be connected, x is going to be as the previous theorem, um, um, and zero not empty, and one not empty. And then if you're given two different Morse functions with um, no, I'm just saying names and axes. I mean, you know, no, I mean, mins and maxes are on the bound, boundary only. Right? No, no, no index axes. No index. Zero. 
then there exists a generic homotopy of so T connecting them. Generic homotopy will have isolated time, but it's not a Morse function. And at those points, maybe you don't really want to talk about an index and critical point. But anyway, before and after that, you have critical points. So basically, you, you never have, you don't have to have birth. Remember, in a generic homotopy, you expect births and deaths of canceling pairs of critical points. You started out with no, you know, no zeros or ends, and there's no reason to introduce them along the way. Um, And that would be used to prove what's called the right of thing of theorem, which tells how two different things are split into them. And then also other <laughs> so, sorry, what was the other so what was the definition of generic homotopy again? Generic homotopy was that it has it generic homotopy basically means for all the finitely like many times, finitely many times it's it's a Morse function. And at those times when it's not a Morse function, the reason it's not a Morse function is that in a, in a particular local model around a particular point, there is this x cubed minus tx model of birth of a canceling pair of critical points. Generic homotopy just means that. So does this mean it's actually Morse for all? It's Morse for all. No, no, no. Because we might. So what might happen is I might have a one two pair point, for example. Uh, so but I never need to. I never have any births or deaths of pairs that are, and where one of them is, is a minimum or a maximum. Right. And that's not obvious at all that you don't need to somehow to get between one from one to the other. Even though you didn't need an index zero critical point, even though you didn't need a little bowl somewhere to, to get it from somewhere else, you need to sort of put one in. You know. And the idea is somehow you want to imagine, you, know, you, can, you can sort of visualize um, you know, your surface, you know, surface coordinates and right? with no little holes hanging off the side, right? And then another one you get to at the end with no little holes hanging off the side. From somewhere along the way, a bunch of little blobs stick out and have index zero critical points hanging on them. And how are you going to get them? Well, you just sort of all along the way, push them up, push them out a little bit, right? You get, you get this little thing here happening, right? And you just push it up. Well, you may worry, well, somehow in the middle, like, you can't hope that it, the, the argument is going to be more or less that you can sort of push them out of the way all the way through, right? And it's, it's not, it's not totally true yet. Um, so let's, let's try to argue this. Um, um, so again, I'm just going to do it for um, proof. Okay, as you step one in the well, so all, all along what we want to do is we're going to, um, you know, we're going to look at, uh, you know, we'll use, use the surf graphic of, well, pick, pick a random one. We know that generic homotopies are generic, so you pick one. Pick some generic homotopy. And we want to um, now clean it up so that all along the way we never have to. Um, so the first claim is that um, we can uh, arrange for x sub t to be uh, f, um, to have critical values. Isolated times when it's um, not Morse, you can just say, well, we're not talking about it, or you can say this really does also make sense. Because at the isolated times, if it's not Morse, you sort of have a, say, index 2 and a 3 at exactly the same point, but that should be, where, where should that be happening? That should be happening exactly between the 2s and the 3s. So that should be the critical value of that 
cubic critical point should be above all the index two critical points values and below all the index three critical values so that immediately thereafter, when you have a new index two and a new index three, the two is at the top of the twos and the three is below all the other threes. Um, and, uh, but if you just ignore, I mean, the, what I, if, you just, if you just say this for the times when it is more set of that was just, um, so how do, how do we arrange this? Um, how do we, how do we show that you could, um, you could bring, let, let's say, you, so to make this statement without having a parameter t in it, what did we do? We had to say that we could drop, if I have a low index critical point above a high index critical point, I could drop the low index point down below. To drop it down, I needed to know that the descending manifold for the low index critical point extended all the way below the, the other critical point. In other words, the descending manifold and the ascending manifolds were just joined. And we did that by a dimension count. If you recall, with that dimension count, if, um, if uh, we also did a similar dimension count for ascending, descending manifolds when I had a time parameter involved. And we discovered that even in, in a one parameter family, um, the only times you expect ascending and descending manifolds to intersect are when they have the same um, index. Now it's corresponding to a handle slide, or this index is actually higher than this index. So again, if the high, even in a one parameter family, if the index of the higher one is lower than the index of the lower one, then we still, through time, will have disjointness of, of uh, um, ascending and descending manifold. So in other words, if you recall, we, so we showed that if the index of Q is less than the index of P, and, but f of q is bigger than f of p, f sub t of q is bigger than f of t of p, um, then uh, the, I want to write that down. Yeah, that, so suppose we have a section where there's no crossing happening. Then um, the, uh, I use this calligraph, I mean this blackboard old thing for the descending manifold for the higher one time, it, it, and the ascending manifold for the lower one. This was a, that again after generically perturbing it. So I won't go through that dimension count again. It's kind of tedious, but but the, the point was you didn't get intersection at, at, at a fixed time. Even if the indices are the same, you don't have intersection. But in a one parameter family, you you have isolated times when you have intersection when the indices are the same, but if the indices are, are if the indice, index of the higher one is lower than the index of the lower one, you still have to this. So what does that mean? So suppose you see, you know, suppose you see in your surf graphic, um, you know, they, they start out, let's assume they start out ordered, right? Um, zero. I'm going to use order for this property that critical values are ordered by index. If they're not, you do a quick homotopy that orders them. Right. So now suppose you see, for example, index um, 1 and index 2, and then the index 1 goes above and drops down. And the, so this is, so the question is, can I do something here to keep the 1s below the 2s? This is the sort of move you need to know what you can do. And the answer is yes, so long as at each time the descending manifold for this critical point and the ascending manifold for this critical point remain disjoint. But precisely because it, as long as this, this, is, um, this is lower index than this one, right, this is a 1 and that's a 2, then e even e throughout this whole interval, right, the, the descending manifolds are going to remain disjoint. Um, as an ex so, so this you can do yes by that argument. Just to emphasize, if I see something like a, a 2 and a 2 going through here, I might not be able to. Even though at any fixed time, at, at most fixed times, you don't have, um, uh, 
you don't have any intersections, there might be a single time in the middle when there's a handle slide. And at that point, there's an intersection of the S and the DC manifold, so you don't expect to be able to do it. And, uh, you know, a good example of this, what's sort of more or less going on here is that why, so in this case, you cannot do it uh, in general. And what what's going on, a good example is, you know, you just, basically you want to slide this over that, but it's below. So you have to lift it up, do the slide, and then push it back down again, and there's no way, and you get to some result which has them in a different position. There's no way to get to that result without lifting the one up. But hey, we don't need this because this, this, this is not a problem for ordering, and we need to know that you can do, um, you do this. So, so that's the step, first step, is to keep critical values ordered by index for all time. Um, so, so, and so this first picture, the, the, the idea is that the descending manifold for the index one is one dimension. Right. The so ascending manifold for index two is one dimension. Right. So, so suppose suppose we're in suppose x we're in a three dimension three manifold. So then you're both co-dimension two. So That's right. So now we have exactly. So we're in, in any in any arbitrary level set, right? We have uh, right. We have the zero dimensional thing here and the zero dimensional thing here, right? But then when we, when we look at some slice across, this ascending manifold sweeps out a one dimension. Uh, well, we got points, right? They sweep out some arcs here. Right? And what am I doing? Um, well, is it that's right, that's right. And so, so this, at, at any, at the inverse image of a point here is a surface in the three manifold. Okay? So the inverse of the image of the slice is, um, along here, is surface cross eye. So that's a three dimensional space. And then the, the, the ascending manifold for this thing is, is, becomes a pair of points intersected with that surface. The descending is a pair of points here, right? And so those pairs of points sweep out arcs, but they're in three dimensions now. Because we're over time they're in three dimensional space, so they can remain just trying to cross. And that, that was the dimension down I was referring to as the daily general, right? But yeah, it's good to have that basic picture in mind. Um, you know, another way to say it is that, you know, suppose this is this is this is a one hand book. Okay, this is a two handle, right? Now, the one handle rises up, and maybe actually, you could imagine that, you know, things are not, you have to perturb things, you haven't made things transverse, and this one handle actually does sort of, you know, slide up and over the two handle. You might think, oh gosh, the one handle's gone over the two handle, and now, you know, I'm stuck. I can't pull that one handle down below the two handle. But of course, the two handle is enough degrees of freedom that I can just, the, the track of this foot that's going over the two handle, that whole track can slide off and I can just go around this way. And I think the comment I made before is that if you had if you were interested in two parameter families of Morse functions, you can't avoid you can't do that same trick because you know two parameter family, the foot can go up and over the one the two handle very stuff. Right? Um, okay. okay, so um, so we've got them ordered and then the other, uh, the other convenience that, so well, of course we're just going to do the zeros and then flip it upside down and do the ends, right? Um, the other convenience that I'd like to do is to, um, just rather than you know, sort of putting some words on it, um, that's going to say, move the cusps so that you can see this. This can look like. I'm going to have my surf graphic. I have on here's here's a, this is going to be t direction. Here's t equals zero. Here's t equals one. I have my critical values. Right. These are some there are various index, but I don't have any index zero critical points. Okay, so my critical values. But now now suddenly, so these are all let's say index ones, index two, something like that. And then I have a. Uh, then I have an index zero critical point form. And I see a zero and a one, right? And now this thing persists. And then the next time that, well actually, I mean, this is sort of automatically applied by what I've said. Um, I see another zero and one, and this thing persists. I see another zero and one. So I want to nest my cusps like this. What, what you could, um, 
worry about is what, what I don't want to have is have a bunch of I don't know other. I, I really just want to know that my what I don't want to have is, for example, this cusp and then another birth. I don't, I don't want to have another birth like that or something like that. I mean, I could, but just this just simplifies things a little bit to do this. Um, so. Why can you do that? The claim is that you can always pull all your births to very, very close to the beginning and pull all your deaths to very, very close to the end. And um, in, in anywhere you want? It, yeah, in anywhere. You, and actually, the re real reason that, that's, that that can be done, the best way to say it is a birth happens at a point. Okay? And as long as you can, it's all you can, so what, here's something you cannot do. You cannot necessarily pull this birth down here because you would be trying to cross, you might. So this birth, so here's, here's what could, here's an example where you could not do that. Um, so you might have, you start out like this, maybe, and then you have a single birth of a cancer of hair, so you have this. Right. And now, so this sort of birth happened right here. Say. Now, after that, where's your next birth? Well, it could be, it could be over here, in which case you could do it independently, but it could be right here. And if it's right here, it kind of can't happen, it can't happen before this one happened, right? In some sense. So, so that you, you I mean, of course, there are different ways to play around with it, but, but so you cannot necessarily pull a cusp below a, a, an index zero critical point because index zero critical point creates stuff and it, you know creates things out of nothing. So below there, there's because there's precisely no descent critical. In other words, th there could be a flow line from here down to there, or this this point where it happens could have a flow line down to this uh, index zero critical point. So, um, but there could be sort of several of these nested pictures. That's right. There could be. Well, okay, so you're you're wondering to have this no, and I mean, this. Right. Or maybe yeah. on the other yes. side of that whole thing, you have, you have that picture. Yeah. All right, like a whole other yeah. one. Right. There, right. All so, so I'm claiming that I'm claiming that, that that what I'll do there is I will, for example, suppose I see this picture. Right. Um, I'm just, just something simpler than that. Right. Suppose I see. Um, suppose I just see this and then this. Right. Okay. I, what I would do is I would take this um, cusp and I would actually move it, I would pull it all the way back into here. Right? I'm not moving it, I'm not cutting it across a zero, I'm cutting it across a one. That's so what you're really doing is like moving the point at which that birth occurs onto yeah. this sort of bump. Well, it's like not necessarily on the bump, it's just in time happening below, you know, in between. Um, I just move it back, so you just make it happen earlier. Right. You make it happen earlier anywhere, and then you do, the, and, and then you just make sure all the all the births happen first, and all the deaths happen after that. Right. And once you've done that, then this ordering thing actually will automatically put you in this situation. It's, this is really just a convenience. I mean, I think the argument under the sketch would work just fine even if you don't uh, do it quite like that. But, um, and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to work with the. Um, I'm going to work with the innermost. I'm going to cancel this innermost arc of index zero critical points. Okay, so let's cancel the innermost. I mean, I don't know, maybe the last argument I did could have worked with the highest one or the lowest one, doesn't matter, you need some, some plan, and even this, I'm not, it just can help me organize my thoughts, I'm not sure, you can think whether it's, it's actually important for the argument or not. Um, I just need somewhere to start, so, so I'm just going to focus on that, right? So I see... Um, and... And this is a one, and this is a one. And I'm not the reason I'm not drawing what happens to the ones is I have no idea. 
Okay. They, might, they, they might go off, they, they might, it might even cancel with two, for example, all kinds of stuff could happen. They might mix up, there could be lots of other ones that come in, etc. Right? I have no idea, it's a big question mark what's happening up there. But what I do know is that I can, so let's, so this is this, you know, here's time again. So I'm going to um, cover time, well, so for each t, um, let's say between this, so this is always t0, one. So for each t between t0 and t1, right, there exists some index 1 critical point, call it q uh, sub 1, which cancels uh, this, so this p, this p is moving around, so it's called 1, which cancels p sub 2. P sub d is the arc of the arc of critical points. As you know, so. it, it, it's in principle moving around in the middle, right? Um, now, basically, just by continuity, each each index one critical point will cancel. But by canceling, I mean there exists a single flow line from p sub q sub d down to p sub d. Okay, um, and uh, so by continuity, you can you can. Uh, have that happen for for each for each uh, you, you can you can do it on, on overlapping intervals, a finite number of overlapping intervals, and you can always assume that uh, this you know make this very first one is actually the one that happened at the birth, and this is the very last one is the one that happens at the birth. And then q sub t zero because we know right as soon as it's born we know it cancels right so q sub zero t zero cancels. This is kind of not quite right to say because they're really the same thing, if you know what I'm saying. Um, and uh, Q sub T1 cancels P sub T1. Okay, so now cover the time from T0 to T1 by um, intervals on each of which. I mean, the point, the point is, there may, at any given time, there may be many different index 1 critical points that cancel a given index 0. And, uh, but we're going to pick one out at random as you go along, and we're going to cover with a finite by compactness, cover with a finite number of intervals. cancel an index one critical point with an index zero critical point, the first thing we should do is pull that index one critical point down until it's close to the index zero critical point to cancel it. Ah, this this is this is why I want to be in most one. Because here's something that might happen. That in the, what could obstruct moving an index one critical point down if it hits if it hits some other critical point first. Well what else could it hit? It could hit an index zero critical point. So it hits an index zero critical point along the way, then that's bad. If I see, if I'm trying to cancel this index one with that index zero, but this thing's in the way, that's going to be a problem, right? So um, that's why it's better to work with the innermost one, because I know there aren't any index zero critical points. I'm working with this one, so there's no other index zero critical points above it. So that doesn't happen. So then you can, um, so pull, I'm going to say pull these down in preparation to cancel, and you get something like this. I'm going to picture that looks like this. Here's my index zero critical point. And now, I'm going to have little arcs of index one critical points that are sort of ready to cancel this particular index zero critical point. Because over, over some interval here, I had chosen a, a fixed index one critical. I'd say fixed index one critical, and a fixed arc of index one critical points moving around. 
that was going to cancel this and make zero quick point. Then I switched, and on this overlapping interval, I chose a different one, and on this overlapping interval, I chose a different one. I pulled them all down close so there's no other critical points in between, but on the overlaps, I still have to have some kind of a cross. Okay. So what this means is that on, um, on this entire interval, this guy can cancel this guy. However, on on uh, on this overlapping interval, and then on this interval, this guy can cancel. Okay. And on this overlap, I could use either one to cancel. Okay. So now I want to um, so cancel. So this is the if I have you know if I have a one parameter family of Morse functions in which I have an index zero critical point moving around and a index one critical point moving around preparing to cancel. There's a version of the cancellation line line from before that says over that one per there's a homotopy of that homotopy that in the middle cancels all you know all the way across. Okay. So I'm over that found, but so cancel over um, uh, you know over everything but the overlaps. get to this. And you get to something that looks like this. You get lots of little things that look like that. Okay? Where I have so um Okay, so I want to, and then I want to argue that I can cancel those. So I want to look carefully at what each of these things look. So each of these things is a birth of an index zero critical point with a canceling index one, then another index one comes out of nowhere, and and, and then cancels that index zero. And I, what I really want to do is, so this is so I'll focus on one. So this is zero. This is one. This is index one. And I claim that I can get from this to, I can cancel this in the following sense so that these two index one critical points have to just be this, become the same, and this goes away. So I want to justify this. There's a formula for this, but um, I won't do that. There's an actual, this is actually one, if, if one can, so what we're doing now is we're homotoping the homotopy, right? So this is a generic homotopy, and this is a generic homotopy. And if one considers generic two-parameter family homotopies, or generic homotopies being generic homotopies, there are higher order singularities that arise, and one of them is called the swallowtail, and it's precisely this. Okay? But rather than write down the formula, I'm just trying to do the argument more, a little more loosely um, and sort of show you what's going on. Um, Actually, let's see, um, let me actually show you that homotopy in one dimension. Okay, the homotopy of homotopies. Okay, it's sort of worth it. So, um, if n equals one, right? What does this look like? So, I want to do a homotopy of homotopies, which means I want to do a um, two-parameter family movie, right? So. One of them, actually I'm going to run it the other way. So one of them starts with no critical points, and, um, sorry, let, let, let me, no, I'll, I'll, I'll draw this, this movie first. Okay. So that movie starts with a single um, index one critical point, which in, in dimension one is just a maximum. Dimension one is not really legal in our whole story because we've already eliminated it in some maxes, but it's really this, Plus some plus and plus plus or minus some xi squared, or right? so it's sort of this. It's this happening happening in the xk plus one coordinate. Is what's going on. Okay. So I have this, and then that goes to it's going to develop a um, pair of it's going to develop a, a birth of a one zero pair, and then that's going to get higher and that's going to get lower. Right. That's the crossing. 
right? You see, that's that's when the index one critical points are at the same height, and then. Which, you know, now you can tell what the degree of the polynomial has to be for this local model. This has to be a degree four uh, uh, polynomial model in this thing. A degree four, it's a degree four polynomial in X with two time parameters, with an S and a T parameter, and I forget the exact um, model parameter. Um, so now I want to say, how do I go from there to uh, something which just doesn't do anything all the way along? Well, um, maybe there's nothing to, to, uh, to draw here. It's sort of obvious that um, you sort of just, in, 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 right smack in the middle of all of this whole homotopy, there's a uh, fourth degree uh, maximum, right? And so however you do it, it you know, these, this, all this stuff just gets swallowed into a smaller, smaller point. I mean, so when you go straight down here, what happens is this just cancels. Okay, so you get to, so in, in this slice, for example, you have cubic and max. So this is two degree. Okay. And in this slice, you have it happening uh, the other way around. And somewhere in the middle, there's this thing where, where they both sort of come down simultaneously. They both, both cancellations happen simultaneously in degree four. That's the picture, and I claim that that's just automatically what's happening and as soon as you got down to this um, this scenario. So let's see if we can sketch that out briefly in two minutes. Um, and The, 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 pro, you know, the argument I have for canceling a single critical point boiled down to saying that everything really happened in one dimension. And the argument was to use that, that sorry, the argument for canceling two critical points using a single flow line. Use that one flow line to sort of pick out this one dimensional space in which everything is happening. The problem here is you may have the index one, you, you have the two index one critical points coming in, and they come in probably in different directions. And you want to sort of argue that everything's happening, in, you know, in, in a one-dimensional picture. You want to argue that really, you know, really this is your main, your, your index zero critical point, and the two index ones are coming in, you know, really in the same in the same plane, right? Um, so all you would have to do then is is just do a um, isotopy of your. Um, so if you see in higher dimensions. What are you going to see? You're going to see some. Um, I'll just go one, 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 one higher anyway. You're going to see your first. You're going to see your index one critical point, right? And then you're going to see your index one critical point. And somewhere there's going to appear a, a minimum m. This is just highly schematic picture, right? Um, but the critical thing is that as soon as this is born. There is this flow line because there was a flow line already to begin with. So there is this flow line from here down there, which means really the picture looks more like um, this flow line comes down here. But then this also has a canceling. Um, so re really a better picture for what's this is sort of in the back here. Um, I didn't do it very well at all, but there's also a canceling. I think there's one great point for that as well. So so the, 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 this is hard to visualize. What's that? I like index zero and index, I want to index zero and two index ones. Oh right, right. Okay. And I want it so that immediately as soon as this is born, it's canceled by both. Okay. And so it's get you've got the two flow lines coming into this index zero critical point, and now you're gonna have to perturb things so they line up in the same uh, in the same one dimensional subspace. Once you've done that, you can reduce to this picture and argue that everything else um, uh, works in higher dimensions. Um, and uh, we should stop. Um, well, I mean, you see, I mean, you've got you've got the directions, is that right? I mean, well, they're they're two different directions. Yeah. I mean, we, fine. You just you just have to move it so that they they're, they're they're both coming in. But the point is, if you literally follow their flow lines in, 
they might hit, here's the index 0, 0, 0, 1, one might come in like this, and one comes in like that. And you want to perturb it so that this one comes in like that. Okay, and now they're in the same plane, and now you can reduce it to the one dimension. Okay, um, that really is the end of the proof. Because then you can, you can kill all those small tails, and then you proceed to the 